Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of the Vinny Eastwood Show, broadcasting live from New Zealand. It's 10,000 clicks away from the USSA, and my very special guest today is Andrew Norton Webber. We're going to be talking about distilled water, if I'm not mistaken. Andrew, welcome to the program. Hi, Vincent. Thanks for having me on. So I started studying distilled water books, and here's how water works. Opposites attract. And that, that in the currently accepted scientific worldview of opposites attract, um, water has a negative electrical charge to a clean molecule of water. And everything that is not supposed to be in your body, the arthritis, the stone material in between your bones, the plaque in your heart, the stone in your cataracts, the yellow gunk, the fluoride, the chlorine, the nicotine that's making your teeth yellow, every single thing in existence, including all pathogens that are not supposed to be in the body, have the opposite charge from water. They have a positive charge. And it's just that simple. It is magnetically attracted to what you think of as garbage, dirt, things that are deadly to you. And that's why you're not supposed to know about it, because it vacuums out the body. And Western medicine is making their money and keeping people in misery, and which, which means power over the people, through the lack of the one simple idea of cleaning the body out from the inside. Everybody cleans on the outside constantly. And evidence that we're not clean on the inside is we all have to use deodorants and have tons of smells coming in, perfumes. Babies don't need that because they smell sweet. The human body smells sweet naturally. The only reason for deodorants and, and perfumes is because we are full of decades old garbage. Now, Western medicine doesn't want to remove the cause of your problems. If you've got breast cancer, they want to irradiate the breast or chop off the breast. They don't want to talk about removing the cause because if they did, there'd be no more repeat symptoms bubbling up out of the cause, which to simplify is toxic overload within the body. To simplify even further is repeat business. Yes. Uh, the main, the two things, you remember only two things from this talk. One is that pure water is the cleaner for the human body. Two is that high, steady, consistent volume is the method. And for the average 150-pound man, a gallon a day uh, will start to bring about fountain of youth type effects as though one were drinking what people experience through drinking urine. Uh, or fruit juices. The meaning of distilled water is in the word itself. It means it's not still, and it's referring to at the molecular level that there's no objects of the opposite charge clinging to the individual molecules and slowing them down. Mm. The more objects you add, you add enough, eventually becomes mud. Very still, right? Distilled water is at the other end of the spectrum. Nothing but hydrogen and oxygen. It's not still. It's the fastest moving water in existence. The early death article is impossible to be an accident. It's very clear that it's done on purpose. And this, anybody that's in the truth movement, should let you know that when they're trying to hide something, there's something there. And what we are talking about is basically all of the fantasy weapons and defenses that you ever heard about come through this knowledge of water. The lost fountain of youth is water. Uh, the secret of alchemy is water, and I'll explain that later. Uh, the Spear of Destiny, um, it just uh, the Holy Grail has to do with water. Um, these are all, this is what we need to kick the monsters off the planet, is this pure water knowledge. And that's why they're so desperate. They took the chances to write an article trying to scare water-based creatures away from pure water when it's really the most awesome thing they can ever ingest. It shows how desperate they are, and it really exposes their attempts to hide this knowledge. They didn't have to hide, uh, try too hard to hide the urine therapy knowledge, but the distilled water one, you will see that it is prevalent. You will see that there, you know, everybody in your health food store will be offended if you start trying to tell them you're going to drink distilled water and you don't like mineral water. They'll think you're crazy uh, because this is so, uh, it's just out there everywhere. Does mineral water um, actually have any good properties to it, though? I mean... If they are, uh, if they are organic, uh, bioavailable minerals uh, from, from underground or whatever? 
Well, they can't be from underground and be organic and bioavailable. They're only made like that through plants. It's, uh, it's photosynthesis is actually what turns the thing from inorganic to organic. Um, let's say an orange tree grows in the ground, right? Um, that's inorganic calcium in the dirt. You don't feel like eating it. But you do feel like eating the orange, which has got organic calcium in it. Now, what happened? Photosynthesis means photon fusion, light injection. Photosynthesis is the injection of sun or light into dead matter. And so that inorganic calcium gets drawn up into the plant. Photosynthesis injects light into it. And the same piece of calcium that was dead and not shiny and unorganized, as in inorganic, becomes organized enough to hold light. And now you have organic calcium. That calcium will repair a spot in your bones. The calcium in dirt and spring waters and groundwaters will get stuck in between your bones. It is completely so it's like the, That's like the biological is, equivalent of getting spinach stuck in your teeth. Here's what will happen if you start trying to tell people you're going to switch to distilled water. One, they'll tell you, no, dude, don't leach, no, leach minerals from the body. Totally untrue, but it's from it's a half on purpose half truth. Yes, it does leach minerals in the body, only the inorganic ones. Physically, impossibly, magnetically, scientifically, cannot touch the living minerals that are supposed to be in you. But they want to give the impression that it'll leach the potassium out of your heart, and you'll have a heart attack, or the calcium out of your bones, and you'll crumple to the floor. The other thing they'll tell you is distilled water is acidic, and you only want to drink alkaline water. This, too, is complete. We're in opposite land. This is completely flipped on its head. And a lot of people can see it when you remind them that they are told it makes them alkaline if they put some lemon drops in their water, right? That's because lemon juice is acidic. Living foods are acidic, and they have an alkalizing effect. You want to consume living acidic things because the burning of that fuel creates alkalis or ash otherwise known as alkaline matter when you have a living piece of wood and you burn it the result is ash otherwise known as alkalis the way you get a proper alkaline reading in your body is from eating living acidic foods and the burning of that fuel creates alkaline waste matter and that is where you want alkaline reading now in the health food world you've got all kinds of people dissing distilled water saying that it's slightly acidic, which is true, but that's just the natural state of it. And we want you to drink alkaline water, which these things like these spring waters, and they say Patagonia waters, like the Valhalla of spring waters, it's like 9.0 alkaline, but that's because it's full of stone. It's alkaline because it's full of dead matter. <laughs> and it'll turn you, it'll make you alkaline in the sense that it'll flood your body with mm. dead matter. How interesting. Uh, one of the first things you should hand to anybody if you're trying to convince them is a document called Doctors and Experts. And I full title is Who Had the Courage to Tell the Truth About Distilled Water. It used to be about 24 doctors, but now I've increased the total to about uh, 75 doctors and experts. And there's no mention of urine in that document. It's just people's, the doctors and experts, uh, quotes on distilled water. And when you read them all together, even if you hadn't heard this talk, it just puts you over the edge. It just keeps giving it to you. And this is well-known knowledge. This has just been lar largely suppressed in this century. Um, I found more and more quotes going back to the 1800s, and I've gone back as far now. I found a quote from Aristotle, 350 B.C., about pure water. So remember, whenever you say pure water, by default, you're in implied you mean distilled water. They're one and the same. Whenever you say you want some oil, you don't mean you want some oil with dirt in it. When you say you want some water, I want some water, right? Not water with dirt in it. So water, pure water, and distilled water are all the same thing. Because that's the natural state of water is to be distilled when it's pure. It's to be the fastest at the molecular level. They don't want you to know about distilled water because it does nothing but focus on removing the cause. It does nothing but go in and magnetically search for objects of the opposite charge. Whether you bless it or not, whether you believe in it or not, whether you put your intentions on it or not, whether you structure it, vortex it, bless it, put crystals in it, whatever you want to do to put it in the sunshine, it doesn't care. The properties of water are as they are. 
this reason we're 80 percent water it's the only reason we're standing it's the only reason you could eat crisco butter steaks and lobster your whole life and not drop dead it's been the water all along that has been vacuuming it out of our bodies now most people are eating three cooked meals a day and animals in nature don't ever eat cooked food and so there's only a certain top speed at which the body can eject garbage most people are exceeding that rate and it gets stuffed up and stuffed up and stuffed up. And so you are seeing this incredible levels of diseases. Mm. If you reverse that trend and start eating either raw foods, which digest themselves and don't require hardly any effort on the body and or just slow down on the amount you're eating, you can reverse the trend, be taking in less than the rate at which you can push it out. And you add pure water to that rather than stone waters, waters already city tap water, which is already loaded with stuff or spring waters, mineral waters. These are already loaded with garbage and they don't have empty vacuum bags. They're already got stuff on their backs and their, their ability to pick up garbage, these individual water molecules, and their ability to have magnetism to attract it. If they got stuff hanging all over them, they just, they're, it's like a, a horseshoe magnet. You know, when it's, when it's clean and with no nails on it, it's powerful. And you can suck nails away from the pile without even getting close to the pile of nails. You get more and more nails on it, it's weaker. You've got to put it closer into the pile of nails. You get so many nails on it, you want to try to pick up some more, it actually ends up dropping a few off because it's lost its power. That's what dirty water is like. That's what spring waters are like and tap water. And the ruse, though, that is fooling everybody is nobody's talking about what types of minerals. Everybody's saying, yeah, i got to get my spring water because, yeah, i got to get my minerals. And Perrier and Pellegrino and all these fancy waters from around the world that are people paying out, you know, crazy amounts for. Which are incidentally containing fluoride because they don't actually come from a spring at all. And when you call them up, that's what they tell you. Oh, it, it comes from a spring, all right. You know, they're just reading the script, bro. It's like, it's just, it's like um, uh, Lewis Black said. It. There, there is some dude in Pittsburgh in, in his bathtub Fill in those frickin' bottles. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, and, if, you know, even the ones that aren't coming from taps, even if they are the most well-meaning artesian, Fiji, whatever, there's two types of minerals. And this is left out of the conversation. There's organic minerals and inorganic minerals. And I'm not talking about farming. I, I'm talking about in the world of chemistry, there's organic and inorganic. Mm. And... The human body can only assimilate organic minerals. Inorganic minerals are what you think of as dust and dirt and stone that you have no desire to ever eat dirt for the most part, right? Uh, uh, no. Uh, right. And speaking of inorganic minerals, the body can't absorb them. Uh, have you heard of um, uh, Dr. Thomas Levy? He, uh, he, he got a bowl of cornflakes, I think, Kellogg's cornflakes. It says, we've got iron in these cornflakes. So he gets a magnetic bag, blends up the cornflakes, puts them in the bag, and then all of these iron filings and shavings actually wind up accumulating on the magnet strip of the bag. They're actually adding real metal into that stuff. And it's not bioavailable, bro. That's that's a beautiful example. That, and that is exactly the ruse that's going on. They are, they've said, hey, it's got iron. Right? We said it's got iron, we're not lying to you. Just not dude, you that the whole ba- truth. dude, that battleship has iron. Are you saying that it's <laughs> nutritious for me to try and eat it? <laughs> that's right. And that's what's killing people is this lack of peace of knowledge that of the difference between the two types of minerals. If Perrier and Pellegrino were being honest and listing the full chemical title of the calcium, magnesium, potassium they're so proud of, it would have to say inorganic calcium, inorganic magnesium, and so on. Um, these, just think about it. These are ground waters. If you had a glass of clean water and you splashed it across the ground and then picked it up, you know it's going to have dirt in it, right? But most people don't realize that water is magnetically attracted to dirt. They just think of a sweeping action and somehow gets caught up in it. But you can even see when you wash your laundry, your clothes, the dirt seems to not stay with a piece of clothing. It seems to go away with the water. And there is the sweeping action, but it's really the magnetism that it's sticking to. And that's why the first thing you think of when you have something dirty, you wear some water. I want to rinse it off. And so in the early death article, the main ruse that is used to scare people, and pretend you don't know anything about distilled water. I know you will now, though, but 
Just start asking random people without tipping off, you know, say, what do you know about still water? Should I drink it? You will start to see this undeniable pattern of people going, oh, no, 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 you shouldn't drink it because it will leach minerals from the body. That's coming from the early death article. And see how, notice they did oh, not Hold on a second, hold on a second. It's leaching minerals from the body, sure, but it's leaching the inorganic, unabsorbable minerals, right? Is that what you're about to say? Yeah. That's right. That's right. And that's how, that is the main, that right there is what is murdering people on a daily basis. That article is scaring people away from it constantly because of that one simple trick of words, not mentioning what type of minerals you're talking about. Uh, the main, the two things, if you remember, only two things from this talk. One is that pure water is the cleaner for the human body. Two is that high, steady, consistent volume is the method. And for the average 150-pound man, a gallon a day uh, will start to bring about fountain of youth type effects as though one were drinking what people experience through drinking urine uh, or fruit juices. The meaning of distilled water is in the word itself. It means it's not still. And it's referring to at the molecular level that there's no objects of the opposite charge clinging to the individual molecules and slowing them down. Mm. The more objects you add, you add enough, eventually becomes mud. Very still, right? Distilled water is at the other end of the spectrum. Nothing but hydrogen and oxygen. It's not still. It's the fastest moving water in existence. The early death article is impossible to be an accident. It's very clear that it's done on purpose. And this, anybody that's in the truth movement, should let you know that when they're trying to hide something, there's something there. And what we are talking about is basically all of the fantasy weapons and defenses that you ever heard about come through this knowledge of water. The lost fountain of youth is water. Uh, the secret of alchemy is water, and I'll explain that later. Uh, the spear of destiny, um, it just uh, the holy grail has to do with water. Um, these are all, this is what we need to kick the monsters off the planet is this pure water knowledge. And that's why they're so desperate. They took the chances to write an article trying to scare water-based creatures away from pure water when it's really the most awesome thing they can ever ingest. It shows how desperate they are, and it really exposes their attempts to hide this knowledge. They didn't have to hide, uh, try too hard to hide the urine therapy knowledge, but the distilled water one, you will see that it is prevalent. You will see that there, you know, everybody in your health food store will be offended if you start trying to tell them you're going to drink distilled water and you don't like mineral water. They'll think you're crazy uh, because this is so, uh, it's just out there everywhere. Does mineral um, water actually have any good properties to it, though? I mean... If they are, uh, if they are organic, uh, bioavailable minerals uh, from, from underground or whatever? Well, they can't be from underground and be organic and bioavailable. They're only made like that through plants. It's, uh, it's photosynthesis is actually what turns things from inorganic to organic. Um, let's say an orange tree grows in the ground, right? Um, that's inorganic calcium in the dirt. You don't feel like eating it. But you do feel like eating the orange, which has got organic calcium in it. Now, what happened? Photosynthesis means photon fusion, light injection. Photosynthesis is the injection of sun or light into dead matter. And so that inorganic calcium gets drawn up into the plant. Photosynthesis injects light into it. And the same piece of calcium that was dead and not shiny and unorganized as an inorganic becomes organized enough to hold light. And now you have organic calcium. That calcium will repair a spot in your bones. The calcium in dirt and spring waters and groundwaters will get stuck in between your bones. It is completely so it's like the, That's like the biological is, equivalent of getting spinach stuck in your teeth. Here's what will happen if you start trying to tell people you're going to switch to distilled water. One, they'll tell you, no, dude, don't le do leach minerals from the body. Totally true but it's from it's a half on purpose half truth yes it does leach minerals in the body only the inorganic ones physically impossibly magnetically scientifically cannot touch the living minerals that are supposed to be in you but they want to give the impression that it'll leach the potassium out of your heart and you'll have a heart attack or the calcium out of your bones and you'll crumple to the floor the other thing they'll tell you is distilled water is acidic and you only want to drink alkaline water 
this too is complete. We're in opposite land. This is completely flipped on its head. And a lot of people can see it when you remind them that they are told it makes them alkaline if they put some lemon drops in their water, right? That's because lemon juice is acidic. Living foods are acidic and they have an alkalizing effect. You want to consume living acidic things because the burning of that fuel creates alkalis or ash, otherwise known as alkaline matter. When you have a living piece of wood and you burn it, the result is ash, otherwise known as alkalis. The way you get a proper alkaline reading in your body is from eating living acidic foods and the burning of that fuel creates alkaline waste matter. And that is where you want alkaline reading. Now, in the health food world, you've got all kinds of people dissing distilled water, saying that it's slightly acidic, which is true, but that's just the natural state of it. And we want you to drink alkaline water, which these things like these spring waters, and they say Patagonia waters, like the Valhalla of spring waters, it's like 9.0 alkaline, but that's because it's full of stone. It's alkaline because it's full of dead matter. <laughs> and it'll turn you, it'll make you alkaline in the sense that it'll flood your body with mm. dead matter. How interesting. Uh, one of the first things you should hand to anybody if you're trying to convince them is a document called Doctors and Experts. And I, the full title is, is Who Had the Courage to Tell the Truth About Distilled Water. It used to be about 24 doctors, but now I've increased the total to about uh, 75 doctors and experts. And there's no mention of urine in that document. It's just people's, the doctors and experts, uh, quotes on distilled water. And when you read them all together, even if you hadn't heard this talk, it just puts you over the edge. It just keeps giving it to you. And this is well-known knowledge. This has just been lar largely suppressed in this century. Um, I found more and more quotes going back to the 1800s, and I've gone back as far now. I found a quote from Aristotle, 350 B.C., about pure water. So remember, whenever you say pure water, by default, you're implied you mean distilled water. They're one and the same. Whenever you say you want some oil, you don't mean you want some oil with dirt in it. When you say you want some water, I want some water, right? Not water with dirt in it. So water, pure water, and distilled water are all the same thing. Because that's the natural state of water is to be distilled when it's pure, is to be the fastest at the molecular level. This water knowledge, not only will it physically, the first thing it's going to do is, you know, the body is the temple. The first thing it's going to do is clean out the temple. But that's just the beginning. All your mental clarity will go through the roof. Your ability to think and concentrate and sleep better. Um, because it cleans out the garbage. You know, even, um, even Alzheimer's is just a matter of foreign objects. And uh, they, they notice the formation of aggregates around the brain cells before they die. Gee, what if we remove the aggregates first, which is what concrete is made out of? Um, so you imagine even Alzheimer's patients get re reversed because they moved the garbage out of the body, out of the machine. You know of no machine that runs better with foreign objects in between the parts. And that's what this water does is focus on flushing it out. So mental clarity goes through and then spiritual powers start to come mm. along, online as in psychic powers, as in um, people start to have crown chakra burst, uh, which is they see a white light in their head accompanied by a feeling of complete bliss, which is the pineal gland. Uh, finally shedding off of its calcification from the fluoride. Uh, this is the direct way for everybody that knows how important the pineal is. This is the way to clean it very quickly. So people start to see white light inside their heads. They start to be able to see in the dark in rooms that they're in with their eyes closed. They start to have telepathic experiences with their children and their pets first. Um, they start to glow. And when I'm literally this means anybody that starts doing this, you actually start pulling in more, more light into this dark place that we're in. And that's literally, I mean, the monsters will run. And deception is no longer possible. Once you understand this knowledge and you start getting it through you, it opens up your psychic abilities. And what we are looking for is a, a populace that becomes psychic. Deception will no longer be possible. And this is the dawning of the age. Well, this is the age of Aquarius now, and and the way that people who study uh, the constellations in the different ages, the way they most basically sum up 
the age of Aquarius is they say Aquarius brings psychic awareness. And that is exactly on a physical level what the water does to people. Um, you notice everybody seems to be gray and kind of scabby. People look like they don't have much light in them. Well, pure water channels pure light. And you're probably familiar with the movie Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. No. Uh, it's a big hit in Australia where the, the two guys uh, started juicing. Uh, they went to go for 90 days straight. Two very overweight. I recommend everybody should see it. This is a distilled waters testimonial. It's, it's two of them because there's two guys in the movie. But it shows you two gray, sour personality, overweight, unhealthy people that start juicing, no food, just unlimited amounts of juices for 90 days straight, and they feel so good, they keep on going. But what happens is, is they turn from all those not very nice attributes, they go from gray to golden and glowing, their eyes become sparkly and lit up, their personalities become happy again. What happens is, they start to treat people nice, they start relating with their family again, they start exercising, they start feeling full of energy. And what's going on is water is a conduit for light. The things we call prana, mana, chi, uh, Tesla's radiant energy, Wilhelm Reich's orgon energy, the force from Star Wars, these are all same, same terms for the energy that is what is animating you and I right now. And what do scientists do whenever they look for life out in the universe? They look for water. <laughs> it's because water is, a, is an antenna. It literally conducts light when it's pure. When it's dirty, the antenna is dirty, and it doesn't conduct as much light. And we can use some physical facts to know this. All electricians know and are taught that distilled water is the only water that will not conduct electricity. And it's because that water does not conduct harmful energy. Water only conducts healthy energy. Water, it is actually the dirt in water that the electricity arcs across. And so electricians have an ohms meter, little yellow box with two red and black wires coming off of it. And they can test things to see if they're hot or not. It tests to see whether or not there's electrical current going between the thing that they're touching. So you can take three different types of water, some well water, which is kind of at the bottom, dirty, some reverse osmosis water's been cleaned a good bit, and the still water's been cleaned perfectly, right? You stick the two ohms meters, the ohms meters in the well water, and you get a very low ohms reading, meaning there's not much resistance, meaning it's easy for the electricity, the harmful energy, to pass through that water. Keep in mind that we're made out of water, right? So when the body or the water is dirty, electricity flows through it easily. So think of a dirty populace, sick, and think of harp, scalar weapons, uh, Wi-Fi, cell phones, cell towers. When water is dirty, harmful energy easily flows through it, okay? Now you put the ohms meter in the reverse osmosis water. The ohms go up. There's more resistance to the electrical flow because there's not as much dirt in the water for electricity to arc across. You stick it in the distilled water and the ohms go pin out because there's nothing in it for it to arc across and it has a massively high amount of ohms, a massive amount of resistance to harmful energy. Okay, so now we see in one set of science that pure water actually blocks harmful electricity. So what a weapon to have or a defense to have in this time of scale. Okay, our weapons and psychotronic weapons. You see that it blocks harmful energy, right? You have proof through Curlian photography, which photographs the electromagnetic spectrum, that the opposite happens, the more the body becomes pure, the more that water becomes pure, the more, more helpful energy it conducts. Another word for pranamana chi, light force. Um, have you ever seen photos of food or animals or people with the, kind of the aura glow around them or the purple, blue, white snapping glow around them? That's from done with a Curlian camera, K-I-R-L-I-A-N, and they have pictures, especially, I know there's one of cabbage, of broccoli and tomato, of before it's cooked, beautiful aura glowing all around it. After it's cooked, same piece of cabbage. Looks like a black and white photograph, but it's not. When you cook it, you kill it, 
you unorganize it and it can no longer hold light. And so it becomes a gray looking piece of matter, much like most of the people you see walking around right now. Okay. So same thing when people get healthier and they put their hands on a curly and photography plate, the healthier they are, the more there is a glow around their hand, around their body. And the sicker people are, the less of a glow they have. So this water, water is known as the lubricant between dimensions. Uh, water is known as the universal conduit. Um, it's for these reasons. That's why they look for water out in the cosmos, because wherever there's water, there's life, which is just a code word for light. Life L-I-F-E is abbreviation of the two words light force. And they're really one and the same. And even the word light has a silent G-H in it, which when you use a G-H is an F sound, like it's enough or tough. Um, so it's really life. And it's life, is they're just kind of hiding it. And most words that you use to describe things that are uh, living or alive uh, or vibrant, when you like things or when you... Even like is a, is a hidden word, kind of high word for the word light. When you like something, you look at it a lot. You attenuate your gaze on it. You, send your, you shine your light. It's even proven now that people's eyes send out light. And so when you like something, you light something. When you, if I like you, Vinny, I'm actually saying that I light you in reality. I spend time looking. I go, Vinny's awesome. I light him a lot. And even the word love is a corrupted word. Love. Love is a low vibrating sound, like duh, love. It's easier to say something that you like them. It's because it's actually what your more intent is. You like them. You don't duh them. You, and look how easy it was for me to tell you. I'm not telling you anything that's complicated, right? Every first grader can understand this. And I have an easiest time with the average Joe on the street who doesn't have a college education. The more educated people are, the harder it is to tell them this. Because they have an egoic investment in their education. No, no, there's no way I could have messed, missed that. They would have taught us that in college. It was like, really? But it's, not, <laughs> it's not in college. Yeah, it's missing. And um, it's too simple. This knowledge, if you aren't willing to listen to anybody, this, the simplicity of this can actually work against you. And you'll find a lot of people like, oh, yeah, right. I can't believe it. So that works against it. Um, let me explain to you why this is alchemy and why you should be even more excited about it and why it's not, you're not supposed to know about this and why it's so important that we, you tap into everybody you know. I want you to start bugging everybody you know and ask them about distilled water. And you can use my website as an information source. But it not only does Aquarius bring psychic awareness, but the knowledge of water itself, the question is distilled water good for you, separates truth-tellers from deceivers. It separates those who are trying to keep the planet asleep from those who are trying to wake the planet up. Because you can ask them about the knowledge, is it good for you? And there's only one correct answer, which is a resounding yes. You can give a, a yes if you want to, but when you really know what it does, it's an excited yes. If they say, no, it's not good for you, or a half answer as in, well, you should only drink it a little bit at a time. Those are both bullshit. And um, then the next step is to give them the true knowledge. You see how easily I told you about this, right? Just a conversation. Anybody that's willing to listen, if they look at this knowledge with 100% accuracy, the common man will see this and understand it as true. Hmm. And I'm not selling anything. I don't sell distillers. My payoff will be the psychopaths getting kicked off this planet. Because everybody that figures out this knowledge and hears about it, they don't forget it. You only need to be told this once, and they start lighting themselves up. And you can't stop people from using this knowledge once they know about it. And the water shortage, water shortage scarcity thing is all bullshit, too. You can distill water anywhere. And the hydrologic cycle is constantly distilling water. Mm. And even if there was a shortage of water, every human, as a last resort if not the first resort, comes with their own internal watering system. That's the beauty of the four different water sources. There's all body waters, breast milk, saliva, plasma, the amniotic fluid, urine, all body waters, all sky waters, rain, mist, snow, dew, and fog, all plant waters, all fruit and vegetable juices. Those are all distilled. 
Um, and then all artificial methods. There's distillers and there's solar distillers. There's all kinds of contraptions that can pull free water out of the air all over the place. The whole water wars is a complete joke and just a complete scare tactic. Um, it's ridiculous. And alchemy, everything you associated with alchemy and the powers of St. Germain, those are exactly what come to somebody who begins cycling pure water through their body. And alchemy means light chemistry. You do not have to study for decades up in a castle tower by candlelight studying old manuscripts to figure out what alchemy means. That's a joke. Again, just like the lost fountain of youth is an easy joke to understand once you understand it. Alchemy, the L sound, alchemy, that means light. Whenever you see the word, you know, like the pineal gland, pineal, it's a pine cone shaped gland and it's, it, it's a pine cone of light. So pineal. Um, the, all matter is condensed light and the science of matter is called chemistry. And so we have chemicals. The chemistry of light is what chemicals are. And alchemy is light chemistry. And Remember I told you that whenever there's water, there's pure light. Whenever they search for water in the universe or life, they search for water. That's because light is the universal, is a lubricant between dimensions. We got here on a ride on water. Um, in Western science, the pineal gland doesn't form until the 49th day in the fetus. In Eastern science, it is said that the soul does not incarnate into the body until the 49th day. Descartes said, the pineal gland is the seat of the soul. It's a crystal throne for the ball of light that you are, your soul. That's why it's called your soul. Soul is the word that we use. The sound in the beginning was the word. It's sound that's important. It's not the spelling. Soul is the word for a ball of light. That's why they call it your soul. We get solar power from the sun. The Latin word for the sun is soul. The Spanish word for the sun is soul. Um, The pineal gland is a seat for your soul. You cannot incarnate into the body until the pineal gland forms. And what are you doing as a fetus at that point? You're floating in pure water. Water is the lubricant between dimensions. You cannot make the dimensional shift from out there to into this body suit until you're floating in water. The pineal gland is even full of pure water. And the more pure the water is that's in it and in your body, the better it functions. So alchemy, light chemistry, wherever you throw pure water, you throw pure light. When you start looping pure water, whether it's your own urine or you're drinking distilled water, and urine becomes clear after five to seven days, especially if you're fasting. It, it's yellow and nasty if you're eating cooked food. But if you switch to raw food and eat healthy and or fast, it gets rainwater clear. And so when you do a 40-day urine fast, you're not actually looping what you think of as urine for 40 days. It's only for the first five days that it's yellow and stinky and has those 5% ingredients in it. 35 and 25 days on out, all you're really doing is looping pure water when you send it. That's how you spend 40 days and 40 nights in the desert. You don't bring 300 pounds of water on your back. You just loop the one set of water that you've got in your body. So... Alchemy is playing with light, and light comes into this dimension through water. That's why water is the prima facie material. In fact, water and matter, they're the same word. You flip the M upside down, you get water, and you flip the W upside down, you get matter. Um, so people start to glow, right? In alchemy, the joke that people are searching for the philosopher's stone, they want to create this powder, this substance that has the magic ability to turn lead into gold. Remember, in, I told you, and everybody needs to watch this, the fat, sick, and nearly dead. The two men go from gray and ashen to golden and glowing. That's what is meant by turning lead into gold. The search for turning physical lead into physical gold is a joke to keep hucksters off the path. And the only thing you'll find there is fool's gold. But it's the light. Those people start glowing. And even in the urine therapy testimonies, there's a common testimonial that people start glowing when they start cycling pure water. What's going on? Their cup runneth over. They've, got, they've become so pure that they're, they're holding so much light, it starts to glow. And that's what alchemy is. And all those powers, telepathy, teleportation, telekinesis, 
those come from a creature that is wielding light. That's a sorcerer or a wizard. Um, that's how that's how alchemists and that's how Saint Germain had these powers was the knowledge, this one simple piece of knowledge. And so you're not just spreading health to people. Sure, you can talk to Aunt Maggie about just the health aspect. Don't talk to her about anything esoteric. Just get her on the water, even if she doesn't own it, without realizing it. Old ladies that start drinking the water and the juices, they have crown chakra bursts. They start seeing light in their head. And that's something that people in the yoga world, they meditate for 20 friggin' years trying to have a crown chakra burst. So you can get old ladies and old men who aren't even trying, don't even aware that there's a psychotronic battle going on, on this planet and a spiritual war. Just by getting them and your friends and your neighbors and everyone you love on water, they start to light up. And you literally light up the whole planet, and monsters only operate in the dark. They scatter when you turn on the lights. Like and it's time for this. Yes, it's time for this knowledge to come out. And this frees people. the The whole body starts to feel better. It lubricates. There's water in between the parts. If you don't have oil inside your engine, the parts start to rub against you. You get friction. You get inflammation. You get heat. You get flame from friction. When people start drinking the water, they start to feel like they're in a cocoon. They start sleeping better. The whole body is lubricated. And that's just the beginning because they can't feel their body as much because there's not as much physical friction going on because the water is lubricating. it. But then the water is also allowing the sacred geometric antenna that the body already is. The pineal gland, the radio and television broadcasting antenna in the center of the head, it doesn't want to be fluoridated and calcified and covered with fluoride and chlorine, which have a positive charge and pure water is attracted to and it melts it off it and they start to see again. Water is life. The water of life. But the water of life, remember I said life is a condensation of the word light force? The water of life is an apt term for water. It it's not that water is life. Water actually is a dead, inorganic compound. Uh, it's that water channels. That's why the of is in there. It's of life. It channels life. Andrew Norton Weber, ladies and gentlemen, you can check out more information about him and uh, distilled water at AquariusTheWaterBearer.com. And we'll see you again sometime, folks.